Today in this lecture we are going to discuss cardiogenic shock or low output cardiac failure. What happens what happens when the heart becomes so much weaker that it is unable to pump enough blood to to fulfill the demands of the human body. Normally in the human heart what happens is that the blood starts coming from the body through the different veins and it comes to the right atrium from the right atrium blood goes into the right ventricle from the right, right ventricle blood goes into the lungs in the lungs the blood gets oxygenated it returns to the left atrium and from the left atrium blood goes into the left ventricle from the left ventricle blood goes through the aorta through the aorta into the human body and here it supplies different nutrients to different cells tissues of different organs of the human body and it fulfills the needs of different uh, human tissues and organs. Now if the heart is unable to pump properly then it will not be able to pump enough blood through the circulation and enough blood and proper amount of blood will not be coming to the different human body tissues and organs and all the cell all the cells all the tissues all the organs of the human body will suffer due to this lack of blood and lack of nutrients and this condition is known as cardiogenic shock now what basically caused decreased pumping of the heart what basically caused decreased pumping of the heart there are a lot of conditions the most important is basically myocardial infarction my most important is myocardial infarction and after that there are a lot of conditions like cardiomyopathy hemochromatosis and like many many conditions which basically leads to decrease in the pumping effectiveness of the heart but the most important is myocardial infarction function which basically occurs due to atherosclerosis and that is something which we have discussed in our previous lectures again and again and again we discussed that how the atherosclerosis leads to myocardial infarction and then how the different systems how the human body compensates uh, the the damage that occurs due to the atherosclerosis now coming back to the cardiogenic shock what happens is that when the blood flow is occurring normally and then there is a decrease in the pumping effectiveness of the heart the the, the, the needs of the human body the needs of the different tissues and organs and cells of the human body will not be uh, fulfilled and it will lead to cardiogenic shock now the most important organ, the most important organ which basically have to be supplied proper amount of nutrient is the heart because the heart is pumping blood to the all the other organs so we we must make sure that this the heart basically receives enough blood so that it can pump properly. If the heart is not receiving proper amount of blood then it will not be able to pump properly. Some conditions may lead to uh, another problem in which the blood supply of the heart will be normal but there may be some other mechanical problems due to which blood will not be flowing but most of the time the blood supply to different tissues of the heart decreases so the heart muscles are not pumping properly because they are not receiving proper nutrients enough new oxygen and other nutrients due to which damage occurs. Now when the blood fl starts flowing in the aorta from the left ventricle into the aorta initially there are some blood, vehicle, uh, blood vessels that starts coming from the aorta and they supply blood to the heart muscles they supply blood to the heart muscles. These blood vessels which takes blood from the aorta and supply blood to the heart muscles they are basically known as coronary vessels. Now we will explain how cardiogenic shock basically occur and how a vicious cycle occur in the cardiogenic shock which basically leads to death. When the blood when the heart becomes weaker when the heart becomes weaker due to any reason the amount of blood that is pumped into the aorta decreases which leads to which leads to decrease decrease in arterial pressure. The pressure of blood in the aorta the pressure of blood in the aorta due to pumping of the heart that pressure falls it decreases when it decreases the amount of blood that is coming or the uh, the pressure of the blood that is coming in the coronary vessels vessels the vessels which are basically supplying the muscles of the heart the blood supply or the pressure of blood in these vessels also decreases which leads to more weaker heart the heart becomes more weaker when the heart becomes more weaker it it is uh, then it is unable to pump even uh, that initial amount of blood so the pumping becomes decrease more decrease in pumping more and more when the pumping decreases then the pressure in the aorta falls again the pressure in the aorta the amount of blood pressure that is being generated due to the pumping of the left ventricle it decreases once again when it decreases once again the amount of blood that is pumped in the coronary vessels or the pressure of blood generated in the coronary vessels it again falls which leads to further decrease in blood supply which leads to further decrease in blood supply to the heart so decreased pressure in the aorta leads to decreased pressure in the coronary vessels which leads to decreased blood supply to the heart muscles which leads to decreased pumping of the blood which again leads to further decrease in the pumping which again leads to further decrease in the arterial pressure of the aorta which leads to further decrease in the coronary vessels and which leads to further damage. Now this, this condition this is known as a vicious cycle. This is known as a vicious cycle. I have some sinus problems so I am unable to talk properly. So now this condition is basically uh, when this condition occurs this vicious cycle when occurs it leads to death. When this occurs, the cardiogenic shock occurs in which there is a vicious cycle occurring. But this condition leads to death in around 85% of the people. Now, if it has occurred suddenly, for example, suddenly there was a decrease in blood in the coronary vessel because of some blockage, because of some blockage in the coronary vessels due to my body infarction. You know, some, then acutely some interventions have to be done like percutaneous coronary intervention in this this clot is removed now if this clot is removed then the the chances are that the cardiogenic shock can be treated the patient will recover but if some big steps are not taken initially like uh, one is percutaneous coronary intervention another is supplying more fluids 
so that the arterial pressure increases. So that arterial pressure, because the arterial pressure has fallen here, so we put more fluid into the system, which basically increases the arterial pressure, which will basically help in increasing the coronary circulation. Now there can be a lot of uh, more uh, treatment options. We are not going into the treatment options. We are just going to explain the physiology of the cardiogenic shock. Now, what happens when this cardiogenic shock occurs in those people in whom there is already some blockage of the coronary vessel? In whom there is already some blockage of the coronary vessel. Now in those people, in those people, even a small decrease in the arterial pressure, even a small decrease in the arterial pressure, for example, the normal arterial pressure is around 100 mm of mercury. In those people, even a 10 to 15 millimeter of mercury fall in arterial pressure will lead to cardiogenic shock. But in normal people, in normal people, in whom the coronary blood vessels are normal, in those people, the coronary vessels, the arterial pressure has to decrease to around 45 to 50 millimeter of mercury. Only then the vicious cycle which leads to cardiogenic shock will occur. So it shows again that the more the damage in the coronary vessel, the more the decrease in the more the decreased blood flow in the coronary vessel, the more the chances of the cardiogenic shock, the more the chances of the vicious cycle which leads to a death. So to summarize, the cardiogenic shock is basically the decreased pumping effectiveness of the heart which leads to inability of the heart to fulfill the NIMARS, the, the new, uh, to fulfill, to supply enough nutrients to the tissues, organs and cells of the human body and the, all the tissues, all the organs, all the cells suffer due to decrease, uh, decreased supply of different nutrients, oxygen, etc. Now, what are the conditions basically which lead to cardiogenic shock? So the most common condition is myocardial infarction in which there is a sudden blockage of coronary vessel, the vessel which basically supplies blood to the muscles of the heart. So if the heart is unable to pump blood, then it will not be able to supply blood to other organs of the body. There are a lot of other conditions which can also cause a weakening of the heart which will ultimately lead to cardiogenic shock. But how? When the heart becomes weaker, it cannot pump properly, so the pressure in the aorta falls. The pressure in the aorta falls, which leads to decrease in the coronary blood flow and the pressure in the coronary arteries, which leads to still weaker heart, more weaker heart, because the blood supply to heart has become uh, has fallen more. When the heart becomes more weaker, then it pumps more uh, weakly, and then the arterial pressure falls more. When the arterial pressure falls more, then the blood uh, flow, the arterial pressure of blood in the coronary vessels, the vessels, the vessels which are basically supplying blood to the heart muscles, it falls more. Due to which the heart, the damage to the heart occurs more and more, and the arterial pressure falls more or uh, fall again and again. And this condition, these conditions lead to so much decrease in arterial pressure that it is labeled as cardiogenic shock, shock which basically occurs due to decreased pumping of the heart. And this occurs, this condition occurs, and uh, this condition occurs when there is damage to the heart and it occurs quickly when there is some damage already present in the coronary vessels. When the coronary vessels are already damaged, there is some blockage in the coronary uh, coronary vessels already present, present, then when the heart receives decreased blood, then it will not be able to pump, uh, pump properly because there is already damage in the heart and even a small decrease, even a small decrease in the arterial pressure will set in this cardiogenic shock in which a vicious cycle of death occurs. But if the coronary vessels are normal, then the arterial pressure needs to fall uh, around 40 to 50 percent only then this cardiogenic shock will occur. So basically I've tried to explain what basically leads to cardiogenic shock and how the vicious cycle of cardiogenic shock basically leads to death. Thanks a lot for watching the video.